Let us go into the house of the Lord. How many are happy to be back in this house Hallelujah. once again? Hallelujah. 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 We thank God for his presence in this place. Yes. We thank him for his healing power. We thank him for allowing thank us to you, be Lord. together in communion once again. How many know that we serve a great God? Amen. Oh, I mean, how many know that we serve an awesome God? Amen. He's he who is creating us and not we ourselves. We are his people. Amen. And the sheep of his pasture. Hallelujah. I just thank God this morning because I'm in the number. As you be old song, Amen. the whiners used to say, they say millions didn't make, make it. it. Millions didn't but make I'm it. one of yes. the ones who Hallelujah. did. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank Jesus. thank God this morning. Thank you, Lord. Fact. We are still here. Hallelujah. 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 Let Hallelujah. us pray. Let Hallelujah. us pray. Father, thank you are Jesus. good. We just love you this morning. We love you for the, for the opportunity to worship again along our brother and our sister. We thank you for the opportunity to see their smiling faces once again. We thank you, God, that you've placed your spirit way down on the inside. And you've given us the gift of salvation and grace. And God, so God, on this morning, we ask that you would have your way in this place. Sing and preach through us, God. Send your anointing into this place. Fill us with your presence, God. And we'll be careful to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's in the matchless name of Jesus that we do pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Come on, let's lift up a praise Hallelujah. to him. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. 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 You are worthy. Yes, you, you are, are worthy. Hallelujah. 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 We thank, thank you so you, Lord much for Jesus. tuning in on this morning. Yes. We thank you for thank tuning in to our amen. broadcast. For those who are in-house, we thank love you, you and we Jesus. thank you for your presence. Thank and you, if you Jesus. are yet in route, we you, uh, we'd like to say to you, there is yet still time thank to you, get God. here and to worship with us. God amen. is doing something great in this house. Yes. Uh, we are still here on Independence Boulevard in the Jones Building. So come on, come all. The Spirit of God resides in this place because he resides in us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as our custom here in house, we ask that you would just go ahead and wave at somebody and greet a neighbor and tell them, God bless you and I God love you. you. Come God on. Bless you. Come on, wave to you. your neighbor. God bless you and I love <laughs> and you. I love you. <laughs> we serve a great <laughs> God. So go ahead and greet your neighbor. God bless you. Those <laughs> of you who are at home, go ahead and embrace your loved one yes. and tell them, God bless you and I, I love, love you. you. God bless you and I love you. Hallelujah. Well, let's worship God in the spirit of holiness this morning. Hallelujah. It is our prayer that the, that the glory of the Lord would rise in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praise
Let his praises rise in this place. Come on, let it rise in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we give you the highest praise, God. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you. Not just because of what he's done. Hallelujah. Because he's done so much. Thank Not just God. because of what he's done. Thank you, God. But for who he is. Yes. He is my provider. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He is my provider. Yes, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, God. Yes, Jesus. Lord, we thank you mm. for being our You're strength. Worthy, God. Thank you, Lord. We Hallelujah. thank you for being our strength. Thank you, God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Strong time. Hallelujah. Somebody thank say a strong tower. A strong tower. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Thank you.
It comes and it goes. Tell it. But no matter what the circumstance, no matter. whatever my lot, thou hast taught <laughs> me to say yes. that it is well. Yes. It is well yes. with my soul. Yes. So, Lord, we thank you for your joy. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your spirit being yes, in this Jesus. place. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. And we know that it is the presence mm -hmm. of the Lord. Thank Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Amen. We are transitioning into a very important part of our service where we touch and agree. We touch and agree. And those of you who are at home, those of you who are in the house, we know that you have been seeking the Lord Amen. on certain things. Mm -hmm. that You have been seeking the Lord on certain things that he has promised you. And you th believe that it has not come to pass for some reason. And you are looking for resolve. And our God is here for you. Amen. For the asking. And we want to transition now. Amen. Minister. Praise the Lord. We thank God for the ministry Amen. of Brother Lavelle Bradford. At this time, I would ask that you would focus your attention to Bishop Jim Logan. Well, good morning, saints. I'm going to ask, uh, we're few in number so far. A lot of people have yet to arrive today. So those of that, you that are here, if you would just come over to where uh, Minister Ruth is and stand behind the camera because we're going to do a baptism today. And we baptize within a community of faith. Amen. Sister Marone, if you would come and stand with your son, as we take him to the water. Amen. Amen. Take me to the water. Take, take me, me to, to the, the water. water. Come on, y'all help me. Take me to the water to, to be, be baptized. baptized. Take, take me to, to the water. water. Take me to the water. Come on, y'all. Take me to the water to be baptized. Come on, say it one more time. Take me, take me to the water. Take me to the water. Take me to the water to be baptized. You'll hear this passage of scripture again today in the message. But as we baptize, we remember the words of Jesus who said in Matthew chapter 28, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you and remember I am with you always 
to the end of the age. Hear also these words from Holy Scripture. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in all. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. So obeying the word of our Lord Jesus and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us therefore remember with joy our own baptism as we celebrate this sacrament today. Liel, do you desire to be baptized? Say it nice and loud. And do you promise through prayer and faith to live the Christian faith? For those of you who are witnessing this today, do you promise as members of this church to guide and nurture Liel by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging him to know and follow Christ and be faithful members of his church? If so, say we do. We do. His mother is standing here with him, but I didn't have her promise individually because Leo is 12. He's growing into a, a big boy and a young man, and we bless God for him. So, Leo, I, I want you to do something at this time. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? If so, say, I do. I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. Do you renounce all evil and powers in the world which defy God's righteousness and love? Say, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that separate you from the love of God? If so, say, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and, and will you be his faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, say, I will. you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's give him praise. sat in here all night long. We bless God. We bless God. Amen. Amen. We're going to go on with our, our service and Lady Sybil is going to take over worship leader at this time. You may return back to your places. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. The angels are rejoicing in heaven right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless you this morning, oh God. Hallelujah. As we move into intercessory prayer, I am just so, I am so full right now. Amen. When a young one comes to Christ and then he allows himself to be baptized, to go down in the water, to be submerged, identifying that he believes in Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Amen. And nobody's mad today but the devil. Hallelujah. So we just thank you, Lord. We bless you this morning, oh God. We thank you for the sealing of your son. Hallelujah. May he rise up and be a great, mighty warrior in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. So we're going to move along further in our service at this time. We will begin our intercessory prayer. Amen. If those of you who are on the live, if you have anyone that you want to be lifted up in prayer, we ask that you would just please put them, their names in the comment section and we will make sure that we lift them up in prayer in the meantime here in the house we want to be prayerful for the mission the ministry the leaders and our members we also want to make sure that we're lifting up our pastor and the churches of kfoci we want to also lift up Bishop Logan and myself, the church mothers. We still are lifting up Dr. Adia Strange. We want to continue to lift up Mother Falls. We also want to lift up her family this morning. As you know, she lost a younger sister that went home to be with the Lord. And so we want to lift her and her family up with peace and comfort during this time of loss. We want to also continue to lift up Aisha Mitchell. I believe she is home now. God is good. So we just want to continue to lift her up and to lift her up in the way that she would be responsible. Amen. And that she would do what she's supposed to do in order to make sure she stays healthy. We also want to continue to lift up the gathering of five. Those of you who have committed to evangelize to at least five people and try to fi bring five people to church. We want to continue to lift that up. We want to continue to have a desire for that. And we're praying that God would give us wisdom, give us boldness, give us confidence. Amen. To minister to those who God has placed on our, on our hearts. We also want to lift up the prayer for the vision of our own building. Amen. God is able. He is able. He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ever think or imagine. Amen. So continue to keep that lifted in prayer. Let us go to prayer. Father God, we just thank you this morning. We are just all in awe of what you've already done thus far, oh God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the young people. We thank you, Lord God, that there's still some out there, Lord God, who want to know you in a real and personal way, oh God, that want to be evangel evangelizing for you, oh God. And so, Father, we pray for the young people now, Lord God, across this city, across this state, oh God, across this nation, within this country, oh God. Father, we don't want this to be a godless generation, oh God. We want them to know you, oh God. And so we're lifting them up to you, 
Lord God. We can't forget about the young people, Lord God. We cannot forget about them, oh God. And so, Lord, put that to our remembrance, oh God, as we continue to lift them up. We continue to mentor young people, Lord God, that we will bring, Lord, young people to church, oh God, that we will tell young people about Jesus Christ. Amen, Lord God, because, Lord God, we know that we're not going to always be here, oh God. And so we have to prepare the generation to come, oh God, until you come, oh God. No man knows when you're coming. You said that you would be like a thief in the night, oh God. And so, Father, while we're waiting, oh God, we're waiting diligently, oh God. We will be about your business, oh God. Help us, Lord God. Help us, oh God, to be about your business, oh God. Father God, help us, Lord God, to not be consumed with ourselves, oh God, to be consumed with you, oh Lord. Oh God, we can't do anything apart from you. We can't do anything without you. We can't even take in our next breath, oh God, without you. I know there are people struggling right now to breathe in the hospitals, struggling to breathe at home because of COVID, oh God, pneumonia, Lord God. And so, Father, we are grateful, Lord God, that we are not on a ventilator somewhere, oh God, struggling to take in a breath of air, Lord God. We don't take it for granted, God. We are grateful, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for keeping us, oh God. You are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. You are Jehovah uh, uh, Jireh, the Lord who provides, oh God. Father, you are present help, oh God. Father, you are a present help. And so, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God. Forgive us, oh God for taking you for granted. Forgive us, oh God, if we woke up this morning and we didn't even say thank you, Lord God. Father, forgive us, oh God. Father, we know it's a process. And so, Father, we want to mature in you. Help us, oh God. Father, that's why you said to, not to forsake the, the assembly of the saints, for us to come into the house of the Lord and to commune together, Lord God, as a community, oh God, so that we can encourage one another. God, I thank you, Lord God, for providing this space for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can come this morning, oh God, and we can come to the table because you told us, oh God, to do this in remembrance of you. Remembrance of what you did for us on the cross. This is just an example of what that was like. But God, the real cross that you, you allowed your son to come and die on us was nothing like this. You took stripes after stripes after stripes so that we, God, would be re reconciled to you, oh God. That we would be healed, oh God. That we would have eternal life in Christ Jesus. It wasn't pretty, but you did it for me. It wasn't pretty, but you did it for others. Thank you for your, your undying love for us. We thank you and we praise you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that as we continue on in this service, oh God, somebody might get healed today. Somebody might get healed today, Lord God, in their minds, oh God. Somebody might get healed today in their body, oh God. Somebody might get delivered today, oh God. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, that your word is true, oh God. Oh, Lord, you told us to trust in you and lean not to our own understanding. But in all our ways, acknowledge you and you will direct our paths. And so, Father, we thank you. We thank you that we can trust in you. We can trust in you. When everybody else fails us, oh, God, we can trust in you. You are faithful faithful when we're faithless oh God you are still faithful and so father we bless you this morning we praise you this morning and God we just want to take this opportunity now Lord God to just thank you and so I'm going to ask MIT Tanya Giles to come and lead us in a prayer of thanksgiving thank him thank him hallelujah
thank you for downloading your message and for teaching this Father God. I thank you for just being God all by yourself, Lord, and just being the good Father God. I thank you for being a God who forgives us over and over and over again, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for all your power. All knowing, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that even though we were born into sin, Father God, you knew that we were going to be hard-headed children. That we were going to be ungrateful children. But yet and still, God, I thank you, Father God, for forgiving us for everything that we have done that did not please you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I thank you for loving us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I thank you for your covering, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for Liam, Father God, even as he would come one with you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I thank you for his baptism today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for fresh anointings over his life, God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for allowing him to see things differently, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for giving him fresh anointings, Father God. Father God, stir up your minions, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Let him know that you will never leave him or forsake him, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you for your power, Lord. We thank you for our young children, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for our preteens. We thank you for our teenagers, Father God. And as they go through so much, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God, I ask you, Lord, thank you for covering them, Lord. Continue to cover them, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. They have so much to combat against, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that even at Hopewell High School, Father God, when that situation happened, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God, finding two guns on campus, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that even in the midst of all of that chaos, Lord, that no one was injured, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. That no one was harmed, Lord, that you kept them, that you just let your angels around them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father God, and because of you and who you are, Lord, everybody went home safe, God, and I thank you for that. I thank you for what you're doing, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God, continue to keep your children, Father God. Continue to keep the mothers, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We thank you for their lives. We thank you for their wisdom, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you allow them to be over us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. That you allow them, Father God, to tell us and give us knowledge of who you are, Father God. To remind us, Father God, when we are slipping, that we have them, Father God. So we thank you, Father God. And I pray, Father God, that you keep their mind, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Keep them, Lord, that they're able to remind us of what we need to do, Father God. That they're able to keep us in line when we're out of control, Lord, in the name of Jesus. So we just thank you for them. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for just being God all by yourself, Lord. I thank you for your blessing, Lord. I thank you for your gratefulness, I, I, your graciousness over us, Father God, and everything that we do, Lord. We just thank you, Father God. We are nothing without you, Father God. We claim, Father God, your name, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, we thank you, Lord, Father God, for you are so great to us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, thank you for our, our man of God. Thank you for our lady of God, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Father God. We thank you for this church. We thank you for this building, Father God, even though you're elevating us, Father God, to a new location, Father God, to a new place where you're doing so much in each and every one of us, Father God. We thank you for what we have, Father God. Father God, please allow us to continue, Father God, to be grateful for what it is that we have here right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. But we thank you for what's to come, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you're going to keep us during this time, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We thank you, Father God, continue to build us up, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for your continuous blessings on our lives, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the surplus, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the good. We thank you for the bad. We thank you for the ugly, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we just thank you for being there for us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we thank you, Father God, that you are God who are, who is alive, Lord. In the name of Jesus, a God that we can depend on, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. A God that we can cry out to, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. When uncertainty arose up in us, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that we can depend on you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, that you would never leave us nor forsake us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, for all that you have done for us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for keeping us through Corona, Father God, in the name of Jesus. This virus, Father God, that still lives on, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And every time I think about it, Father God, my heart goes back to the days that I was in the hospital, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, for saving me, God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Father God. Because you are 
are such a great God. You are such a great God. You are a healer with your stripes. I was healed from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, God. And I thank you for that, Father God. And I know I had to go through that, Lord. But I thank you anyhow, Father God, because I came out a new woman. Because of you, God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. And I thank you for that, Father God. I thank you for those days of not being able to eat, not being able to sleep, not being able to breathe like you have equipped me to be to breathe, God. I just thank you for that, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I thank you, Lord, because in every situation, Father God, you get the glory, God, and I just thank you for that, Father God. I thank you for keeping me. I thank you for not killing me, but I thank you for what you put in me, God, during that time, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I know I had to go through it, Father God. No matter how sick I was, I was never scared. I wasn't scared, Father God. I thank you for having me during that time. I thank you, Lord. I love you, Father God. You are so worthy, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you for all the COVID cases, Father God. I thank you for the nurses. I thank you for the doctors, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I thank you for the dietitians, Father God. I thank you for the cooks. I thank you for the CNAs, Father God, that's taking care of those people, Father God. I just thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God, because all of those people, those nurses, Father God, were there, and I just thank you for them, Father God. Those doctors were alive. I thank you, Father God, for having the nurses keep them strong, Father God. Building them up, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Thank you for your power. Thank you, Father God. I love you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God, because you are great. You are a great God, Father God. We thank you, Lord. Continue to build us up. Continue to give us power. Continue to allow us to keep your word in our mouth, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I will praise you all the days of my life, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Thank God for Minister MIT, Tanya Giles. Amen. Sharing her testimony of God's greatness. Hallelujah. He is good. He is good. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Well, welcome. Welcome to Kingdom Fellowship Christian Center. On behalf of Bishop Jim Logan and myself, Lady Sibyl Logan, we welcome you here. We are so glad to have you. Thank you for those of you who are on the live stream. We're so glad that you've joined us. There's still time if you want to come out. We're at 2925 East Independent Boulevard in the Jones Building on the second floor. We are practicing social distancing. Amen. We have masks. If you don't have one, we certainly can provide you with one. Amen. So if you want to come out, as I said, you still have time. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Well, I just want you to stand up and look at your neighbor and just say, hey, you look good this morning. Turn around and look at the other one and say, you look good this morning. And tell him I love you. But Jesus loves you more. Amen. We are so grateful. We are so grateful that you joined us this morning. And so at this time, we're going to, we're going to go over our announcements. Amen. So we have coffee every Sunday morning, as well as a couple of Krispy Kreme donuts. So you don't want to miss out on the Krispy Kreme donuts. I got somebody sitting there saying, mm-mm, 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 no. No, I know it's bad. I'm asking God to help me with that. Amen. But they are good. <laughs> Amen. So we have coffee here at 9, uh, from 9 a.m. to 9.50. So if you'd like to get some coffee before you come in, make sure you come in a little early. Amen. All right. Children's ministry. If you have a call on your life to help young people, to help them grow, to teach them the word of God, we ask you to step up. Step up. Our young people, they need us. Like I said earlier, we don't want 
this to be a dying generation that doesn't know God. We don't want them to be a godless generation because we're not going to be here forever. Amen? And so we need to take, come alongside our young people. Embrace them. And one of those ways that you can do that is through equipping King's kids for the future through word, music, and fun every Sunday morning. So if you'd like to be a part of that, please reach out to me. Please let me know. And then we'll have some conversations. Amen. To God be the glory. Service times. Our service times are at 10 a.m. on Sunday and 7 p.m. on Wednesday evenings at 2925 East Independence Boulevard, right here in the worship center. Please come out. Please join us. Also, you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Please be sure to go out and like and subscribe. Amen. Women's Bible Study. This is very, very critical to our growing, our discipleship. And we, we encourage you to join the, the Version Bible app. If you have a cell phone, all you have to do is download the app. I believe you can download it on Androids if you're an Android person, as well as an iPhone person. Amen? All you have to do is search and friend Myself, CC253 Logan, to be added to the list. Our very own minister, Ruth Tomlin, is the host for that. And so she has been picking some really awesome Bible studies that they're like three days, five days that you can join in and you can also comment back and forth. We have to encourage one another in the Lord. Amen. And, and the Bible talks about us hiding the word in our hearts. We got to hide the word in our hearts. Because it may come a day when there are no Bibles. And we need hope. And we need a word. If you got that word hidden in your belly. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will bring that back up to your remembrance. And it may not be for you. It may be for somebody else. Amen. Amen. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to encourage one another. We're supposed to love one another. So please join. Please join. Amen. All right. If you do not have your KFCC decal, you can get it today. All you have to do is see one of the deacons here in the house. Deacons, raise your hands. Amen. Praise the Lord. They're only $3. Amen. So we want to represent for KFCC. Amen? All right. November week of prayer and fasting. The Bible says, the prayers of the righteous, they avail of much. Amen? It also says, pray without ceasing. Amen? And so we're going to do this together as a church. Amen? We're going to start prayer at, um, on November 15th. That's next week. Next, 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 yes. And so I'm going to start it off at midnight. Amen. And we're going to go around the clock for seven days, ending on Sunday, November 21st. If you don't have a time slot, please see Minister Ruth Tomlin or Sister Barbara. And they will get you in, the, in a slot there. Amen? Amen? We have to pray for one another and for, for the, the church. We have to pray for the, the nation. We have to pray for this country. We have to pray. If we don't pray as the saints, if we're not doing, we can't expect for those out there in the world to do it. Amen? Amen. We're the ones that make the change. So we need to be serious about prayer. Not just during this week, but we need to pray without ceasing. Amen. But this time we're going to do it corporately. Amen. If you missed the live stream, you can catch them on YouTube. 
just search for Bishop Jim Logan's channel. When you're there, please like and subscribe. We appreciate your support. Amen. Well, that is the end of our announcements. Amen. So if you will adhere to those accordingly, at this time, receive Bishop Jim Logan as he comes. Amen. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet if you would, please. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. Now, come on, it's quite, kind of quiet in here. I know we're not a whole lot, but let's exalt the name of the Lord. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. There is no one who is like him. Come on, bless the Lord today. The Bible says, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. And hallelujah. Come on, somebody throw your head back and cry, hallelujah. Amen. I'm alive and I'm well, and I thank God for the privilege of being in his house. Amen. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. We extend an additional welcome to those of you who are watching by way of live stream. And though I want you to know there's still time to get here before the word today. You can still make it into the house. We praise God that there is a word in store for you. We're thankful for our new little brother today who was baptized. We praise God for him. Amen. And, and hey, listen, listen, he was a trooper today because it was cold in here yesterday and the water was hot when I put it in there yesterday. But by this morning, it was cold. Amen. Y'all didn't hear him, but when he sat down that water, he said, it's cold. <laughs> and I, I bless God for him. Amen. So don't be upset with him. You look back there and you see he's got his hood on his head. Amen. He's just trying to make sure he doesn't catch a cold at, after coming up out of the water. And we bless God for him. Amen. Amen. Was it all right, Leo? Huh? Was it all right? Amen. He said it was cold. <laughs> Amen. I tell you what, you'll never forget it. Never forget it. Amen. Bless God. You may be seated in the presence of a living and awesome God. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you to join with us for our midweek Bible study on Wednesday. We are continuing. We only have two segments left of our series on the super long book of Jude. Jude has one chapter with 25 verses and we have two more weeks and then we'll be finished with that study. Listen, if you've missed any of that study, you've missed it, but you can catch it on the YouTube on my channel or you can catch it on our Facebook page. They're still listed there. So I want to invite you, those who are watching if you're not able to join us in person, we invite you to tune in at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Uh, I want you to be in prayer for uh, First Lady as she'll be traveling a couple days at the end of this week and will not be here next weekend. And so just keep her in prayer as she travels. And then we want you to pray for us because the next week after that, we're going to be driving up to Maryland to get mom and dad and bring them down here uh, to spend a, a few months with us during the winter to get them out of the, the super cold up there. So you just pray for us as we go to get them, and amen. I'll put you all on notice right now because uh, the chief mother is coming. Glory to God. Amen. Any of you know Mother Logan, amen. Be on your best P's and Q's. Glory to God. Amen. We bless God. And we're grateful for all of you here. Grateful to see uh, our guests with us today. God bless you today. Amen. We're grateful for you and your presence with us. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, we bless God for the opportunity to be in the house today. Hallelujah. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Um, we do have a cleanup scheduled for next Saturday following our intercessory prayer. So our intercessory prayer is at 11 o'clock. Following intercessory prayer, we are going to have a time of cleanup. Really, the cleanup is going to be on the other side of the veil. Amen. Back in that storage area. Uh, we're, we're going to have a lot of things to do. There's a lot of clothing and some shoes back there that we need to go ahead and take them to goodwill. Uh, there's a whole lot of, listen, I, I want us to be brutal. We don't need to be hoarders. 
Amen. If something back there is broken, is old, we haven't used it, we're not going to use it. We have two dumpsters out back for this building. Amen. Let's make a donation. Amen. To those dumpsters. Uh, because we, we've got to begin to get ourselves ready for what God has next in store for us. Amen. Amen. And so I, I want to invite you to come. Come and pray. Come and pray. And then following prayer, we're going to do some cleaning up. Amen. Thank you to Minister Patricia, uh, who is uh, spearheading that as as well. Amen. Amen. I continue to thank uh, God for uh, her. And, uh, you know, I, I just love being able to say something and somebody pick it up and run with it. And I, I just mentioned about flags, and next thing I know, we were taking up money for flags. Amen, which reminds me. Amen. And so I'm just grateful uh, for that. And uh, if you're a, a member of this fellowship and we didn't get your flag up here, amen. We're, we're still working on getting a couple additional ones. We're getting a, a Jamaican flag, and we're getting a Congolese flag. Uh, for up here, and so we're, we're just grateful that because we're an international ministry. Amen? Amen. How many of you are still praying and working on your five? Amen. We're calling this the gathering of the five. Listen, I don't want you to become discouraged. Amen. Because you can get discouraged if you begin to have instant expectations. I told you that when Jesus said to go into the highways and byways and compel them to come, that you have to trouble people with your invitations. I'm not, I'm not telling you to be obnoxious, but trouble them with your invitations, amen, until they come, amen. They may eventually come just to shut you up, amen. But we believe that if they can get into the house and experience the grace and the mercy and the favor of God that they will want to come back again. Amen? Amen. So we bless God. I want to encourage you in that regard. Amen. Amen. Am I missing anything that, that I need to announce? Those who are watching and we've got all these robes on today. This is first Sunday and we celebrate the Lord's Supper. This is the only time in our month where we have any semblance of high church. The rest of the time. And amen. And don't 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 get it twisted because we will shout in these robes. Amen. Amen. And, and, and uh, Lady Cece is uh, asking me to say something about women's uh, Bible study that was yesterday. I believe the women meet twice per month, is it? Or once per twice per month? Huh? E okay. E every, every other week they, they meet. So they met yesterday, so they'll meet again in two weeks from yesterday. And they had an awesome time yesterday. Minister Ruth uh, taught uh, to, to begin, and she taught about, I, she cracked me up because I, I, like I like to refer her uh, to uh, as Mrs. Potiphar. Amen. Because the Bible doesn't give her name. It just says she was part of Potiphar's wife, so I call her Mrs. Potiphar, and she taught about Mrs. Potiphar yesterday, and if you missed it, well, bless God. I'm, I'm sure she will give you a brief primer, amen, on that, and then Lady Sybil continued with the study on the Holy Spirit, and so we, how, how many more weeks do you have of that? A few, Amen. Amen, so they're still going with that. Amen. Glory to God. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. Amen. Slow. It slowly is beginning to warm up in this building. It was so cold in here. And when you have a cement building, it holds the cold just like in the summer it holds the heat. So I can I can feel the heat now, whereas yesterday, amen. But we, we had to be excited in the prayer because, I mean, we we're, our teeth were chattering. It was so cold. Uh, but we're grateful to God for that. Amen. Amen. Well, it's offering time. Amen. Amen. It's good to give God thanks and praise Amen. for the offering. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We bless God. We bless God. And so we want to encourage you to come and bring your offering unto the Lord. Amen. Those who are watching by way of live stream, 
Uh, we've provided methods for you to give electronically. You can use the Givelify app on your phone. We are listed in Givelify as Kingdom Fellowship Christian Center, Charlotte, North Carolina. That's Kingdom Fellowship Christian Center, Charlotte, North Carolina. Or you can give using the secure PayPal portal uh, listed the same way. And many of you like to use the Cash App and we are listed in Cash App as dollar sign Kingdom Fellows, dollar sign Kingdom Fellows. If you're in the house uh, and you'd like to use your debit card, uh, we can service you in that area as well. Uh, Deacon Tyrone in the back has the card swipe and you can see him in the back. And of course, you can uh, utilize your envelope to bring your checks and your cash, however you want to give. The Bible says that when you plant seed into good soil, it will spring up 160, 30 times over. You can't beat God when it comes to giving, no matter how hard you try. Amen. Amen. So those who are, are, are watching online, I release you now to give. And those of you who are in the house, come on and bring your gifts. Come joyfully because God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Thank you so much for your giving. Let's receive our praise and worship team as they come and prepare us for the word of God. Hallelujah. 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 We were created to worship him. We were created to worship him. Amen. That means that we are to use our voices and to sing praises unto him. We are to lift up our voices and magnify him. We are to lift up our voices and worship him. He's worthy. He is worthy. When you think about what he has done for you, he is worthy. He is worthy. If it were not for him, Many of us wouldn't even be here right now. That's right. I know when I was deep sinking in sin, he kept me. Yes. He kept me. Yes. When I was doing things I wasn't supposed to be doing, Thank you, he Lord. kept me. Thank you. So he's worthy. Yes. He's worthy. I'm standing here and I can see you with my eyes. When I did something I wasn't supposed to do and I almost went blind. He's worthy. Yes, he is. So when you see me praising him, that's why. When you see me lifting up his name, that's why. When you see me over there in the corner tearing up the carpet, that's why. Yes, yes, yes. When you see my makeup running down my face, yes. That's why. Yes. I don't know if you've ever not been able to see at some given time or not. But to be able to, 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 to not to be able to see, you don't want that. So I'm grateful. Amen. So we're going to sing this song, and if you know it, we're going to ask you to join with us. Because God is faithful. Yes, he is. Even when we're faithless. Yes. He is faithful. He is faithful. Thank you, Lord. In the good times and the bad times, he is faithful. Hallelujah. Yes. 
you can go ahead and start the track, Deacon. If you don't mind standing to your feet as we worship our Come on, somebody say it with us. Say faithful. 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 Faithful is our God. Faithful. 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 Faithful is our God. Come on. Faithful. 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 Faithful is our God. Faithful, faithful, faithful is our God. I'm reaping the harvest God promised me. Take back what the devil stole from me. And I rejoice today. I shall recover it all. I rejoice today. For I shall recover it all. Faithful, faithful, faithful is our God. 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 I'm reaping. God promised me, take back what the devil stole from me, and I rejoice today, for I shall recover it all, and I rejoice today, I shall recover it all, holy, 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 holy. I shall recover it all. Come on, feel this Jesus. Je Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is our God. Hey. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is our God. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is our God. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus is our God. I'm reaping the harvest God promised me. Take back what the devil stole from me. And rejoice today. Put your hands on it. Come on, let's say it again. And I rejoice. And I rejoice today. And I rejoice. And I rejoice. Hallelujah. 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 Our God is faithful. Recover it all. Our God is faithful. Yes, is that anybody's is. testimony this morning? Hallelujah. God is faithful. Yes. He is faithful. Hallelujah. The Bible says that when my mother and my father forsake me, the Lord, He will be with me. Yes. He is faithful. Thank you. He sticks closer than a brother. Closer. Our God is so faithful. Closer. We have to remember that he is faithful to Hallelujah. us. He is faithful to us. Closer. And he will be faithful to this nation. But we got to do our part. We got to lift him up. Yes. 
We got to lift him up. Hallelujah. We got to tell somebody about yes. him because he is faithful. Yes, he is. He keeps on keeping on. Amen. Amen. He's the Amen. one that gives us a chance after chance Amen. after chance after chance. Yes. Amen. He is faithful. He's a keeper. Father, I love you. Thank you, Lord. Father, I adore you. Yes. Father, I praise you. Yes, we do. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, I'd ask that you would receive our bishop. Amen. Bishop Jim Logan. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Those who are watching by way of live stream, we apologize for the difficulties we seem to be having uh, with the live stream today. We're not sure uh, what is happening, but we're thankful that you continue to stay with us during this time. Amen. The devil is a liar. <laughs> he is defeated. Amen. It's time for the word of God. Amen. And as we come into the presence of the Lord, this is the last in the six-part series on my to-do list, a series entitled My To-Do List. Uh, so we're going to go back to the passage that we have utilized through the previous five weeks, and we continue with that as our foundational text, Luke chapter 6 beginning at verse 46, Luke chapter 6, beginning at verse 46, amen, amen, are you there? Jesus asks this question. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and acts on them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when a flood occurred, the torrent burst against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who has heard and has not acted accordingly is like a man who built a house on the ground without any foundation. And the torrent burst up against it and immediately it collapsed. And the ruin of that house was great. Father, may it please you to pour forth your spirit upon this flesh let me preach not for fame nor for reputation, but to the end that this people might believe. Minister to us now, I pray, in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of a living and awesome God. Look at somebody and tell them, this is the last. Come on, I didn't hear you. This is the last of my to-do list. Amen. Five weeks ago now, I began our to-do list with the first four of 24 different things that Jesus told us to do. If you remember and you were with us, I began with worship the Lord and serve him only. Repent, follow Jesus, shine our light before him and do good deeds. Four weeks ago, we added four more. A righteousness that surpasses that of the Pharisees. A commitment to settle matters quickly. Giving to those who ask without turning away from those who desire to borrow. Loving our enemies and praying for those who persecute us. Three weeks ago, we added give to the needy, pray. Forgive those who sin against you and fast from food as a spiritual discipline. 
than two weeks ago in the fourth installment of the series, we added yet four more. Treat people the way you would like to be treated. Enter through the narrow gate. Do God's will and acknowledge Jesus before people. Last week, the previous four were honor your parents, be humble, confront the person or persons with whom you have conflict, and love your neighbor as yourself. So now today we come to the final four of this six-part series of 24 separate things that Jesus taught told us to do. Now, as I told you last week, this list is not intended to be exhaustive. In other words, this is not all that Jesus told us to do. This is just a list that I have given to us as we begin building on this foundation that we went about relaying. There are certainly many other things in the Word of God and many other things that Jesus said that we can find. But it is intended to form for you and for me the next steps after a foundation has been laid. As I told you last week, if, if you have never observed a construction site, what is being built or what is being laid, whether it's a, a, a roadway or it's a building or it's a house or whatever it is, there are stages, there are steps to that process of construction. So for us, even laying a foundation had stages to it, the, the digging of the ground, even before that, the surveying of the ground, the laying out of where it was going to be, the digging down, the, the laying of footers until finally a foundation is built over top of that. But no one lives on just the foundation. Something has to be built on top of that foundation. And so if you will, what we have done with these 24 things, Brother Wallace, is that we have uh, begun the building. And I, I looked at it and I thought this could perhaps constitute uh, what some contractors who are building houses call the roughing out of the building. It's, it's just, it's, it's not ready to be lived in yet. It, it's just roughed out. It, you, can, you can now begin to see that progress is moving in a good and positive direction direction. You, you can even now begin to see that what is being built is beginning to take shape. It is beginning to look like something. Whereas before, I, I know as you've driven around different parts of uh, this area in which we live in that is growing so fast that you'll go past a, a construction site that does not say what they are building. And, and the question in your mind is, what are they building now? And, and every time you go by it, there's no sign on it except the, the sign of the contractor. You're, you're not certain what it is. But as they continue to build and as it begins to take shape, it suddenly uh, dawns on you, oh, they're building a McDonald's. Or, oh, they're, they're building a, a gas station. Or, oh, they're building something of that nature. Uh, but... But what, where we are right now in this process is that we are at the rough stage. I, I need for you all to get this. We are at the rough stage. One of the things that we forget with ministries is that ministries are not dead things. They're living things. And if you've ever had a plant, there are times when it becomes necessary to go and to prune that plant in order that it might bear more fruit. I didn't intend to go this way, but let me, let me, let me focus here for a moment. I, 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 I have some, uh, some, we have some plants on our deck. And uh, the, the plants on our deck, even through the heat of the summer, it, 
they have remained green and continue to grow. But what I noticed that as I went out and looked at them, that it had all kinds of, of brown and dead leaves that were drooping down along the sides. And, and I began to notice that the, the plant, other parts of the plant that were green, they were not growing. It, it's like they were getting smaller. And they were getting smaller because the dead leaves were sapping the strength. Y'all not hearing it. Sapping the strength out of the plant. Whether you recognize it or not, we're living in a time when it's not enough just to come to church. We're living at a time when, when going to church is no longer just a ritualistic practice. That when we come to church, we're coming to church not just to receive, but to give. And I'm not necessarily talking about money. I'm talking about give of ourselves and to give to one another. And, and sometimes uh, ministries can become uh, stagnant and they be can become stayed and, and, and they stop growing. And you begin to, to wonder why is it that we seem as though we're going backwards when what we desire to do is to go forward? Why is it that it seems as if we're declining when what we want to do is to increase? Mm. I preached a message several years ago, and some of you may remember it. It had stages that said uh, healthy things grow. Growing things change. Change challenges us. Challenge forces us to trust God. Trust makes us healthy. Healthy things grow. It, it's, it's a cycle that, that we go in, and, and, and the problem is, is that oftentimes we don't like change. So we begin to assume, Sister Barbara, when particularly you're a growing ministry, it, it doesn't take but a couple people to not be in church for it to look like there's nobody in church. Amen. And sometimes the assumption is that something is wrong because it does not appear that we are growing. And what we miss is like that plant that is no longer healthy. And it's no longer healthy, not because it doesn't have the word, not because it doesn't, uh, it's not receiving enough sunlight, not because it's not receiving enough water, but because there is some dead things in it that are sapping the strength from it. Are, are, are you all getting that? Now, now, here's the interesting thing. We are not the pruners. We, we are not the ones who go around and say, ah, yeah, 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 let me cut you off. It's the Holy Spirit that comes and prunes the plant back. So, so we are in a rough stage. Hallelujah. We're in a stage of change. But let me go take, I, uh, this was not in my notes, so let me go back. Uh, healthy things grow, say that. Growing things change. Change challenges us. Let me see the hands of everybody that just loves change. I mean, everybody that loves it, but God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, it's good to love change, but you realize you're in a minority because the majority of the people resist change. And, and the interesting thing, the, ir the irony of it is, is that you can sit in your seat and do nothing until Jesus takes you home and you'll still change. But because we're creatures of habit, we, we, we get into routines, uh, uh, Marone. Uh, when change comes, uh, we resist it because all of a sudden uh, things are happening differently than what the way we are accustomed to them happening. Well, that's not the way we used to do it. And in fact, the seven last words of a dying church are this. We've never done it that way before. Healthy things grow. Growing things change. Change challenges us. 
Challenge forces us to trust God. Trust makes us healthy. Healthy things grow. So, so I'm a, we, we, we're in the stage of change. We're in that stage. Of, we're building on the foundation and it's roughed out. And sometimes in the process of roughing a building out, you, you will find some things that looked good on the plan. Okay, stay with me. They looked good on the plan, but as they begin to rough it out, you're like, mm, I don't think I like that. I, I really thought a doorway on that wall was going to be great. I really thought that it took French doors over here, but now that I see it, it, it th 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 I think I'd like it better with a solid wall. Or maybe I really prefer an open concept. And it calls for change. So, as I end this series, what we're doing, this growth of building on the foundation, it's beginning to distinguish us from other buildings. Amen. There was a time that no matter where you went in the country, in fact, no matter where you went in the world, you recognized that a building was a McDonald's. Because they were built to look exactly alike. Correct? I want you to know something. Churches are not to be exactly alike. Now they have the same word. They serve the same God. God's word never changes. But everybody doesn't like to be in a church that has a track meet. Everybody doesn't like to be in a church where they spend time on the floor in the presence of Jesus. Everybody don't want to be in a church where they haba shaba. Everybody doesn't want to be in a church where it's quieter than a church mouse. Amen. I got to be where there's some noise. Amen. Glory to God. I mean, churches are different. It doesn't mean that, that, that one church is better than the other. If they have the true word of God, if they're faithful and following God, they're, they're, just, they're a true branch of the one true tree. What we've got to do as we're building it is have our ears open so that we're responsive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because whichever way the Holy Spirit says go, that's the way we're going. Whatever the Holy Spirit says do, that's what we're going to do. Amen. Doesn't matter if we haven't done it before. Amen. Because we are flowing with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us not become so attached to a process that we cannot be flexible enough to turn when the Holy Spirit says turn. To stop when the Holy Spirit says stop. To, to press or, or to mash down on the accelerator when the Holy Spirit says, no, not, now's time to sprint. Hey, don't, don't, don't be afraid at times to take a step back and say, no, we need to slow walk this. Amen. Uh, because God knows what he's doing and, and God knows who he desires to do it with. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I, I, I thank God. You know, I, I used to be uh, extremely upset because it seemed like God gave me so many spiritual daughters. And I'm like, Lord, can I have some sons, please? You know, I, I love my daughters, but can I have some sons, please? I, I, need some, I, I need some sons so I can help build godly men. And not just because the kingdom needs them, but some of these daughters need some godly husbands. Amen. And, 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 and I finally grew to the place where I recognize that it's not my place to determine for God whom he sends to me to minister to and to train. That in God's time, he will send whom he desires to be in this house. Amen. I believe that as we give attention to to how we build that those who are watching because there are people who are watching amen everybody likes to see a building go up there are people watching that you have no idea who they are they're watching 
And what will they see as they're watching? What they ought to see is a building that has been responsive to the directions of the Lord. So let's grab hold of these last four. Number 21 in our list is serve everyone. Somebody say that. Let me hear you. Come on, say it again. Now, Matthew chapter 20, verses 26 through 28. And I think I, I meant to expand this text just a little bit, but I got in here today and was trying to warm up the water a little bit for Liel and uh, didn't get to this exactly. Um, amen. But Matthew 20, and I think just to put it within context, when this section begins, the sons of Zebedee, their mother comes to Jesus and asks Jesus to command that in his kingdom that her two sons would sit next to him, one on his left and one on his right. And Jesus says, you don't know what you're asking because you don't understand my mission. He asks her, can you drink of this cup? And, 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 and then, and when he says this, he recognizes that the sons of Zebedee have really put their mother up to this. So when he asks the question, he doesn't ask it to the mother. He asks it to the sons. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? And I say that because in the text, it's not the mother who answers, it's the son who answers, sons who answer, and they say, we are able. And Jesus says, mm, you know what, my cup you shall drink. In other words, you, you're going to be martyred too. You don't realize it, you're going to be martyred too. But are you really understanding that to sit where you want to sit is not mine to give? And when he said that, the other ten disciples became indignant with them. How, how, how are you? Because by asking, they're elevating themselves above the others. Who, who, just who do you think you are? See, they had the completely diff, uh, wrong concept. So in verse 25, Jesus calls all the disciples around him, and he now teaches them saying, you know, the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. In other words, this is how the Pharisees act. Remember the Pharisees, they, 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 wore, they wore these long robes, uh, and they had people that went through the streets before them, uh, hollering and saying, make way, make way, make way, make way. They, they, they had bells woven into the hem of their garments so that people would hear them coming. And they wanted to be honored and revered. And they lorded their authority over all these people. And Jesus basically says in verse 26, it's not this way among you. You've got this, you've got this backwards. You, you don't understand how this works. He says, whoever wishes to become great shall be your servant. Now, one of the interesting things about human nature is that we have a tendency to covet the greatness that we see in others. Whether we're talking about a basketball player. Re remember when all the kids were saying, I want to be like Mike. And then they changed it and started having foolish debates about, you know, who, is it Michael that's the greatest or is it LeBron that's the greatest? And, but the, the, or Jacoby or, uh, you know, they, the, uh, Kobe rather, they, 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 were, they were trying to, to compare themselves to an ideal 
of greatness. And sometimes ours might not be athletes, uh, but, but we have the same way of comparing ourselves, not realizing it's not what you have. It's not where you sit that makes you great. But what makes you great is the attitude of your heart. And the attitude of your heart that causes you to be a servant. Make no mistake about it, the life of a Christian is a life of service. Amen. What, what makes you a Christian is not that you say you're a Christian. That, that's the question that Jesus asked. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? Uh, you know, that, that's flattering. You're Lord, Lord, yeah, I, I love Jesus. He's my Lord and Savior. Well, if that's so, then why are you so hellish in your behavior? If that's so, why are you so disobedient in what you do? Uh, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but do not do what I say? The Christian life is about service. How are we going to go about winning the lost? We do it through serving them. And, and when they question our motives, why are you doing this? You hardly even know me. That's when we can respond and say it's because of Jesus. I don't know about you, but when I think about Jesus and, and all the things that he's done for me, it's not just a time to shout and give him glory, but it's a time to go and do likewise. Jesus, when he was with his disciples, he grabbed a towel and he wrapped it around his waist and he got down on his knees and he began to wash his disciples' feet. And when he started with Peter, Peter said, no, Lord, you don't wash my feet. I'll wash yours. And Jesus said, if you won't let me wash your feet, you have nothing to do with me. And then Peter says, oh, I made a mistake. If that's the case, not just my faith, but my feet, but my whole body, wash me completely. See, it's a life of service. Jesus himself, Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, who he himself said, I and the Father are one. Jesus, who is, was fully God and fully man, he came down from his place in heaven and to ultimately go to a cross on Calvary where he would die. But then in between, he modeled for us what it means to be a servant. Matthew 23 and, and verse 11 Amen. Well, let's go to verse 28 here, Deacon. The, the, the next verse, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. I've told you all before, I appreciate everything that you do for us. But you will never see me sitting expecting you to come and bow before me as if I'm your God. I'm your servant. Amen. There's a difference between honor and worship. It's right to, to honor. The Bible says that those that serve among you are worthy of double honor. But don't get it twisted. It's not the same thing as worship. So Matthew 23, verse 11, uh, it says there, But the greatest among you shall be your servant. The greatest among you shall be your servant. Hallelujah. So number 21 is serve everyone. Now, that's tough to do, isn't it? Okay, let's get real for a moment. There are some people that are easier to serve than others. Hello, somebody. There, there's some people, remember I told you that some of the difficult sayings of Jesus will cause you to sit back and say, Jesus, you and I were cool until you just said that. And then we get stupid. Lord, if you really knew what they were like, did you hear? If you really knew. We're, we're talking about God who knows all things. But we say to him, if you really, if you really knew what they were like, you wouldn't ask me to serve them. He knows this is not an easy thing. So that brings me to number 22. Because you need number 22 to enable you to do 21, and then when we get to it, 23 and 24. 22 says, love God with everything you got. 
with your heart, with your soul, and with your mind. Whew. See, you might show yourself not worthy of my service, but I'm ultimately not doing it unto you. I'm doing it as unto the Lord. That, that, that person that you're called to serve might be so crazy and evil acting that all you want to do is smack the taste out of their mouth. Yet you serve them because your service is unto the Lord. Because you love God. What's that? What's that? That, 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 that crazy, almost rapish style gospel song that asks the question or says, I love God. Do you love God? Is, is that Mary Mary? That say, I, 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 when she did with her son or something like that. Uh, but, 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 but that's an interesting question. You have to ask when you look at some believers, do you really love God? If you really loved God, you wouldn't do the things you do. If you really loved God, you wouldn't say the things that you say. If you really loved God, amen. Go, go ahead and sit down. You're tired of standing up. We're, we're good. We're, we're good. You can sit in the chair. That, that sitting on that stool is tough. Amen. Bless. I, I thank God he wanted to help. Amen. But sitting on that stool, I've sat on that stool. That's why I don't teach on that stool anymore. Because after a few minutes, it starts messing with you. Amen. Amen. But I, I bless God for your heart, sir. I bless God. Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all. Clap your hands. Hey, for, for, Amen. Yeah, I, I know, but he says he, like, prefers Michael. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So we're to love God. That's what Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 40 says. It says that we are... You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Verse 38 says, is that the only one I put up? Okay. All right. That's the only one I put up. So let, let, me, let me read the other verses to you. This is the great and foremost commandment. Verse 39 says, the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. And then verse 40 says, on these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. In other words, and, and, and this, this, is, this is where it gets a little, little crazy. Because some people will tell you, no, all we're supposed to do is love one another and love God. Here's what they miss. Loving God with everything that you have, loving God with everything that you are, determines how you love other people. The, the Greek word in the text here for love is agapeo or agape. It's the love of God. What kind of love is this? This is love in spite of. I it's love that is a choice. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God didn't wait for us to get our acts together. He loved us still, loved us so much that he sent his son. We have this tendency to, to withhold our affection, withhold our service, withhold our, our even our hopes and our dreams for people until they begin to show themselves worthy of it. We want to see them start moving in a positive direction, but that's not what God does. God says, I saw you when you were in the club. I saw you when you were shacking. I saw you when you were drinking and drugging. I saw you when you were out there running the streets. I saw you. 
and, and I could have used a, a, a finely chosen bolt of lightning and reduced you to a pile of ash, but I saw potential in you. I saw not who you were. I saw what you could become. I saw that you had the possibility of being what I created you to be. I, yeah, I saw what you went through. I saw what other folk put you through. I saw the experiences that you had. And even though, though they were ugly and even though they were difficult, I still loved you in the midst of it. Even when you were acting out and misbehaving because of what you had been through, I loved you still. Now all you've got to do is turn around and love me in the same way. Even though I'm not doing for you what you think I ought to be doing, love me anyhow. Even though you're not in a place where you understand why I let you go through some of the stuff you go through. Uh, uh, yeah, Michael and I had a conversation yesterday. He asked me, I love it when kids ask me questions. He said, well, if God knew that this was going to happen before it happened, why didn't he stop it? And I looked at him and I said, that's an excellent question. But see, sometimes God will let you go through some stuff because he knows because all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. He knows that if he doesn't let you go through some of that stuff, you will never come to the place where you can appreciate him. You'll never come to the place where you can worship him. Uh, some of you are sitting here right now and you hated the things that you went through, but you know for yourself that had I not been through that, I wouldn't be in the place that I am right now. Had I not gone through that, I wouldn't be able to worship the way I worship right now. God had to let me go through that. Look at somebody and tell them I'm better for it. And when you love God that way, you'll love other people that way. See, this is agape love. This is not I sex you. This is not even I friend you. This is not I secure you. This is, I love you in spite of your craziness. I love you in spite of your stupidity. I love you in spite of your ignorance. I love you in spite of your sin. I love you anyway. Now don't get it twisted. Because I love you doesn't mean that I'm going to give you whatever you want. Because I love you doesn't mean I'm going to uh, overlook some things. I'm going to let my yes be yes and my no be no. I'm going to tell you what's, uh, what's right and I'm going to tell you what's wrong. But in the midst of it, I'm going to still love you. My God, my God. Sometimes even with somebody who's laboring and sin, you need to look at them and say, I love you and I believe that God has the ability to transform your life I'm not going to stop loving you I'm going to keep right on loving you because he called me to love with everything that uh, saints uh, this is not ritualistic practice this is not occasional and inconsistent practice uh, uh, this is one where someone is completely sold out to God uh, Lady Sibyl is sort of like uh, uh, the crazy discussion uh, uh, that the chicken and the pig had with one another over who's more important to breakfast. And the chicken maintained, I'm most important to the farmer's breakfast because I supply the eggs. And the pig said, no, you don't get it. Yeah, you supply the eggs and that's kind of good, but for me, I have to supply the bacon. And for me to supply the bacon, yours is just a contribution, but mine is a total sacrifice. See, 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 when we love God with everything that we have, it's not a contribution, it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice to serve in the way he's called us to serve. It's a sacrifice to be where we're supposed to be at the time we're supposed to be there. It's a sacrifice when everyone else is partying. 
they were clowning me yesterday, and 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 and, and Michael started it, so you know I'm gonna get you for that. But you know, went, ran and told I had the football game on in my office, but my team was playing. Ohio State was on the television, and and I make no excuses for that. And and and, and but you know what? I only saw a tiny little bit of that game because. I was doing stuff in here, getting ready for today. I sacrificed my personal, y'all not getting this. I sacrificed my personal desires. Are, are y'all here? I sacrificed my personal desires to do for the Lord what I needed. Y'all you know, missing this. You, you, you see, see, we, we want to slip and slide and do a little bit and think the little bit's going to get us over. Are, are you here? Uh, you, you, you've got to do more than you've done before. Mm. Brother Wallace, do you want something that you've never had? If you want something that you've never had, you've got to do something that you've never done. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So we've got to love him with everything that we have. That's 20, 22. Here's 23. Feed, clothe, visit, and invite in the poor and the needy. Feed, clothe, visit, and invite in the poor and the needy. Uh, Matthew chapter 25, Jesus teaches, and in the process of his teaching, he talks about the judgment. How many of you know the Bible tells us that there is appointed unto everyone once to die and after the judgment? And people often wonder, what is the judgment going to be like? Uh, Jesus tells us. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them from one another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He got it. Here's a question, Brother Jose. Are, are you a sheep or are you a goat? Some of y'all heard me teach on this. <laughs> you, you, you pet lambs. You barbecue goats. Y'all just missed that. He, he's going to separate the sheep from the goats. Look at somebody tell them, I want to be a sheep. <laughs> Amen. He separates them. And, and he says, and he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. There is within Scripture the theology of the right and the left. The right is associated with everything that is good and godly and holy. The left is associated with everything that is nasty and evil and bad. You don't extend your left hand to somebody to shake their hand for that same reason. This is nasty, but before there was toilet paper. The left hand was used to wipe yourself. So you don't give your left hand. He said to be separated. Then verse 34 says, Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. How many of you are looking forward to Jesus saying that to you one day? Amen. Now, why is he going to say that? Here we come to verse 35. It's up on the screen. For I was hungry. Wait a minute. He doesn't say when you came to church, you had the cutest two-step, three-step, four-step I've ever seen. You had that crazy way of putting, picking up your feet and carrying on. And, you know, you, you just had a cute little shot. Didn't say anything about your tongue. Didn't say anything about your worship, but said, well, I was hungry, and you did what? Gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you did what? Gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Verse 
verse 36 says, naked and you clothed me. Sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to eat? And, and when did we see you a stranger and invite you in or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? The king will answer and say to them, truly, I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of the, these brothers of mine, even the least of them. You did it to me. The days of serving ourselves and feeling good about it have always been over. The, the days of feeling good about yourself because those folks that are just about at every busy intersection begging for you to put some money out the window and you felt good because you put a couple dollars or some change out the window not realizing that all you may have done was contribute to their dysfunction. But you felt good. But you felt good. Felt good because you gave clothing to somebody at Christmas but didn't think about the rest of the year. Felt good because you went and took a bag of groceries that fed them for today. But what about next week? You see, this is where we get into trouble. Because when you come to serving someone, it's not a temporary thing. It's a consistent thing until they come to the place where they can stand up on their own. We feel good because somebody was hungry and we gave them a fish. But what you should have done was taught them how to fish. You know, when, when, when I became single again and I had to suddenly either spend all my money eating out or figure out how to cook. I was grateful to God that I still had a living mother. That I could call on the phone. And though she was six and a half to seven hours away. She could talk me through fixing what I wanted to fix. Now generally I wasn't starting from scratch. Generally I already had an idea what I wanted to do. But I had some questions. But once she taught me how to do certain things, I had that dish down. Y'all not hearing me. In other words, I didn't have to call her anymore for that dish. <laughs> May have to call her for another dish, but not that dish. See, because you can feed somebody or you can teach them and feed them so that now they can go and feed themselves. We've got to get out of this mentality. I've been cussed out. People coming to the door of the church years ago when we were on South Trine Street. We used to have people come to the door of the church all the time. I'm hungry. I need something to eat. And we had this humongous pantry because we had a daycare center and schools at Thanksgiving time they would collect non-perishables to distribute to daycare centers. And so we had this huge closet that was stocked full of non-perishables. I'd go and I'd get a box and I'd fill it up and I'd bring it to them and they would screw up their lips and screw up their nose and they didn't want it. Sometimes they would come I'm at lunchtime and the, the lady would cook for our kids, many of them, the, the only meals that they had was at the daycare because their, their parents would send them to daycare in the early in the morning with a bag of potato chips as their breakfast. We'd feed them breakfast and lunch. And they weren't having hot dogs and beans. I mean, she'd fix some grown folks' lunch. 
I gained so much weight when I first came to Charlotte, it wasn't funny because I was sitting upstairs, all that food wafted upstairs to me, and I'd go down to eat, and so they'd show up around lunchtime. She always made more food than the kids could eat. And I said, I can't give you any money, but you say you're hungry, we're eating. And they would cuss me out. Tell me, you're supposed to, you're supposed to take care of me because you're the church. While I'm about as crazy as they are, I look right back at them. I said, quote me book, chapter, and verse where it says that. The Bible does tell me I'm supposed to be as wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove. I'm supposed to let my yes be yes and my no be no. This is not Jesus saying, let yourself be a doormat. Jesus doesn't expect you to check your insight and your discernment at the door. Some people don't want your help. They just want your substance. But I can work with somebody that wants my help. Amen? So feed, clothe, visit, and invite them in. Here's the last one, and we're going to be done with this series. That is make disciples and baptize them. Now, here's another area, Barbara, where we where we get confused because if you ask the average Christian what is it that the church is supposed to do, they will list feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit. I mean, they'll list all those things. Have a daycare center, have a food pantry, have a clothing closet. They'll list all those things are worthy and good, and Jesus did tell us. We just saw it in the text. But our number one responsibility is this last one. Make disciples. Allison, do you know what it's like? It's, 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 it's like if you were an entrepreneur and you came to the Charlotte area and you found yourself a huge tract of land and you decided, I'm going to build a factory so I can employ people. And this factory is going to make shoes. Into this factory, you put the best equipment that you can, the latest equipment. You hire the, the, the best personnel, the best managers that you can because you're the investor. And once you do all that, you now go back to where you came from while they go to work. You come back later on, and your question is this, Allison, how many shoes have you made? But Allison begins to list all the challenges. Well, you see, there was a leather strike. And then there was a shortage of rubber. And then we had labor disputes. And on and on and on. But the investor is not interested in all of that. The investor wants to know one thing and one thing only. How many shoes did you make? Y'all are missing where I'm going with this because Jesus is the investor. Jesus says, you are the ecclesia. You are the church. You are the people of God. And, and I gave you everything that you need to perform your function. I gave you the best of the resources. I gave you pastors after my own heart. I gave you teachers that would teach you. I sent you apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. I did all of that so that you could do one thing and one thing only, and that is make the disciples. So now here at the end of the age, the investor is coming back and the investor wants to know, hey, church, how many disciples? No, I didn't ask you how many members. I asked you because how many of you know there's a difference between discipleship and membership? I didn't ask you how many members are in your church. I asked you how many disciples did you make? I, I, I didn't even ask you how many people did you baptize because some people that get baptized don't stick. Some people that join churches don't stick. When you make a disciple, it's different from making a convert. 
When you make a convert, it's like a baby. That, 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 that person has to be trained and nurtured. You don't give a baby, a Brother Jose, a, a crying in the middle of the night, a, a porterhouse steak that you've just nuked with a fork and a steak knife. And why do you don't do it? It's because that baby cannot handle it. And first of all, cannot even uh, handle the steak itself, let alone know what to do with a knife and a fork. And so you, you have to give them pablum, baby's milk, some. Paul says to the Corinthians, I, I, I would address you as spiritual, but I cannot because there is this among you. In other words, he's saying you're still down at the place of eat, uh, drinking uh, Similac and Ifamil and mother's milk. You're, you're not yet ready to go on to the weightier matters of the faith because where you are spiritually. And see, we've got to understand that when people come to Christ, we now have to nurture them into discipleship. Don't expect them to do what others have been able to do. Don't expect them to be in places where others have been. Don't expect them to immediately leave all the things that characterize their own life. The truth of the matter is only a small percentage of people that when they come to Jesus have such a radical change. Most people are like that man who Jesus healed of blindness and he looked at the man and he says tell me what you see and the man says I see men walking around but they look like trees and so Jesus had to touch him again. I know I'm talking to somebody in here where you've had some places where you had to get another touch from the Lord. Where he had to reach down and touch you again because when you looked you could see but it looked like men walking around looking like trees. Uh, see you've got to nurture people into discipleship. Sometimes we'll get people who are not disciples into leadership and wondering why we got mess going on. It's because they were not nurtured and trained into being leaders. I don't care how long you've been in the church. I don't care how long you've served them. I don't care how many titles that you You can tell somebody's depth of maturity just if you watch them. They don't even have to say anything. If you just watch them, you'll pick up their depth of maturity. What we're supposed to be doing is making disciples. Making disciples. The tragedy of our generation, we're seeing it in the natural, where we have young men who are real good at making babies. With no responsibility for making men and women. <laughs> Almost like it's a badge of honor. I got all these babies, all these kids, there, but not raising them not training them, not teaching them. See, we've got to do better than that as the church of the living Christ. Am I talking to anybody in here? Now, all these things are part of what it means to rough out the building. The Lord hasn't told me where I'm going to go next week, but I know that I've got to go higher than this. This is just roughing out the building. Amen. When you look at the building, we got the frame up. Maybe we even started to get some uh, drywall in. Maybe we don't even have any drywall. Maybe the, the building is just framed, and, and we, we've got that outer shell on before you put the siding or the brick up. It's just roughed out. Brother Wallace, we haven't, we haven't wired it for electricity yet. We, we haven't put the plumbing in yet. We're, it's roughed out. But God wants us to give greater structure to what he's called us to do. Amen. Don't you grow weary? Don't you grow tired because of what you don't see yet? Look at things with the eyes of faith. See where it is that God is taking you. See where it is where God is taking us. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But when we see him, we're going to be like him. Amen. This is my to-do list. I want to encourage you to take this list of 24 things. Stick them up on your mirror in your bathroom. Just like you put in your reminders if you have an iPhone of things that you need to do today. Set these up as your reminders to 
today, this is what I'm going to do. This is the direction I'm headed today because I want to honor God. Amen? Is that good? Listen, you can confess that maybe you've not been all that you should have been, but here's the good news. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Don't you worry about what you didn't do. Look at somebody and tell them that's the past. You can't go back and reclaim it. Just do what Paul encouraged us to do. Press forward. Press toward the mic of the heart calling in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Was I speaking to anybody today? Did this well up in anybody? Amen. I never want to waste your time. Amen. Let me pray for you. So, Father, I thank you. And those who are watching, I'm praying for you too. I thank you and I bless you that in my weakness, you are made strong. I praise you that where I lack, you supply. Yes, God. Thank you. I bless your name yes, God. that you give greater structure and formation to this word today that it might indeed well up to a spring of life. Yes, Lord. We bless you and we praise you for Thank it even you, right now. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Be with my sisters. Be with my brothers. Yes, Lord. Help them to take this word and incorporate it yes. into their lives. Yes, Lord. And then for those, oh God, who do not yet know you in the free pardon of their sins, Lord, draw them to your precious bleeding side. And we give you honor and glory and praise. Thank you for the privilege of sharing. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. We're getting ready to go to the table to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Those who are at home as we prepare to go, I want you to get yourself prepared. So go ahead and go to your kitchen. Get yourself a little juice. Find yourself a piece of bread or a cracker. Amen. I looked for a picture of the Last Supper that was a little bit more authentic to that part of the world. Sometimes we forget that we're in there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Elders. We're bringing around some hand sanitizer for everyone now. To our guests, we, we use a process called intinction. And so when we call for communion, you will come with the others and you'll break off a piece of the bread, a large enough piece, <laughs> and then you'll dip it in the cup so as not to dip your fingers in the cup and then commune immediately. Amen. And that's called intinction. Amen. 
glory to God. I call you friends because that's what we are. And we have a friend who sticks closer than a brother. His name is Jesus. When mother and father forsake us, the Lord will take us up. Oh, how he loves you and me. He died for us. He was buried for us. But early that first Easter morning, he got up from the grave with all power in his hand. And he lives today. And because he lives, we live also. So we come to this table not to re-crucify him but to remember the sacrifice that he made for us. No greater love has anyone than this, that they would lay down their life for their friends. I want you to take a moment to think about just how much he loves you. Not just then, but now. My entire life, as I can recall, I've watched my father. Every time it came time to partake of the Lord's Supper, tears would run down his face as he considered just how far a holy God went to ransom a sinful humanity and a sinner like him. Think about for a moment the places you have been, the things that you have done. And it should lead you to the place where you acknowledge I should have been crucified. I should have suffered, bled, and died. I should have hung on the cross in disgrace. But Jesus, God's son, he gladly took my place. Is anybody grateful for that? So when you come to this table, this is no longer Hawaiian bread. And I know we like Hawaiian bread. This is no longer just grape juice. These are powerful symbols. This bread represents his body. This juice represents his blood. We partake of it not like cannibals, but we partake of it recognizing that we are one with Christ. Amen? So Lord Jesus, bless now these common elements of bread and juice. Set them aside. Consecrate them holy that they become for us symbols of your never-ending love representing your body and your blood. And as we partake of it, O oh God, may our commitments be renewed. May our dedication be even more solid. We bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, he took the bread, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and eat, all of you. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this, remembering me. In the same manner also, when he had finished eating, he took the cup, he lifted it up, and he said to his disciples, this cup represents the new covenant in my blood. Drink of it, remembering me. For whenever you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, you show to the world my death until I come. And how many of you know that he's coming again?
would you now turn to your right, my left, all except for the ministers and the MITs and mother, and come across the aisles and follow the direction of Deacon Angela. Amen. You can come from the back, Leo. And Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Come, 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 come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory to your name, Jesus. Wonderful Savior. Glorious Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Blessed Jesus. We worship you, God. Our deacons, God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Let's serve the ministers. Bless you. We bless you, Lord. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Elder Deb, would you thank Jesus for this spiritual food? Dear Heavenly Father, we give glory to your name and we thank you, dear Lord, that we're able to remember to remember you and you alone. We thank you for the bread of life. We thank you that you continue to give it to us, Lord. We thank you for this day this holy day of communion, Sunday. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody clap your hands and give God praise and glory. Come on, bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Amen. Did you all get blessed today? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. To our guests today, we thank God for you being here with us today. I pray that you received a blessing from the Lord. Is this your first time with us? Amen. Glory to God. Uh, amen. Minister Patricia, God bless you. Amen. Uh, did you all get her information? You did, Mother? God bless you. Amen. God bless you so much. We thank God for you. We want to invite you to come be with us at any time. You're welcome here. We thank God for you. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. To Liel, he, he baptized today, communed today. Amen. And serving. He's back there working our live stream. We praise, praise God for him. Amen. Amen. Please press your way this week and then press your way next Sunday. Don't forget your five. Pray daily about your five. Pray that God would grant you favor with everyone to whom you speak. Amen? Amen. 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 Did you get blessed today? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm not going to try to sing today. Amen. We're just going to pronounce the benediction and we're going to go. Lift your hands as if the Lord is going to bless you with something. As a bishop in his church, as a prince in his church, I do now bless you with the blessings of Christ. I bless you to be a blessing to others. Go, remember these 24 things to do them. Make them part of your daily list. And may the God of grace grant you even greater favor. May you be blessed in your going and in your coming, in your lying down and in your rising up again. May you be blessed on your jobs. May you increase in every area. May health and prosperity follow you. And we bless God that he will use you mightily to lead others to the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Go in peace. I love you. There's not a thing you can do about it. Those of you who have been watching by way of live stream, we thank God for you. See you again on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Amen. Tell somebody you love them and there's not a thing you can do about it and you're dismissed in Jesus' name.